our mic's live. Hello, our mic's alive with five seconds to go. Uh, I push that button. I see our pretty faces. Hello, welcome to Art of Rock. Um, a big hello to everybody who's currently under a desk with knee pads on trying to figure out why their gear isn't working. That's part of the joy uh, in hindsight. Um, every single Saturday morning, maybe not every single Saturday morning. Man, my computer really hates me today. Diana, it's great to see you in the chat. Every Saturday morning, we're here on Angel Spitz Twitch and also in other places um, for Art of Rock. And we're going to talk our way through mad shit because that's where it exists. This is brought to you by Angel Spitz Patreon. Many uh, Patreon members are here. Um, and obviously, if you're not a Patreon member, you're welcome to join. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for being part of the Patreon. You're getting a copy of the new album, which is called The Bastard Gods, and it's kickstarting right here, so Patreon members get a free digital. Um, that's the album, Bastard Gods. I am really, really, really happy with this album. The Kickstarter finishes on the 3rd of July, but it's actually going to go to Bandcamp pretty damn soon. Um... There's an amazing playlist that's on Spotify that I want you to follow called Industrial Incisions. And many of the bands here, in fact, all of the bands here are represented. Ivan, are you on this? Not yet. That's Ivan, you're supposed to send me an email with one of your tracks so I can put you on the list. Because people do listen to it. I listen to it at least once a week, and it's great. It just keeps you reminded of what's going on. Um, and if you see a band you like, follow them, because that's what it's all about. It's kind of like the Hokey Pokey or whatever it's called. Um, if you like more music and you like it from the Bleeding Edge, MTV TV. Incidentally, MTV TV, I need stickers, because I'm doing a big mail out soon. Everybody, I need stickers. Hang around after it and remind me if you want me to throw stickers in with my Patreon mail outs. I um, mean, my um, Kickstarter mail outs. I would love to. MTV TV also has a... Um, uh, Patreon, it's right there. Go back it. They they need you because we need MTV TV. Yes, I have an ulterior motive for doing for pimping MTV TV. It's because it's the best way to help us. And if, if your music's too weird or crazy or anything, welcome to the club. That's what we do. And if you send stuff to MTV TV, they will play it. And if you're looking for new bands, go there. If you're not inspired, go there. Go to that Twitch because some of the stuff on MTV TV, it's inspiring. Go get inspired. And if you think, oh, I can't do this for whatever reason, go to MTV TV, listen to the music, watch what they're doing. And it's like, damn, man, I can do this. All I need is my, my phone, go out somewhere crazy and shoot some stuff. Um, Because it's fun. This is punk rock, kids. Part of the parentage of industrial music is punk rock. Don't forget it. Welcome to the Art of Rock. I'm shooting my mouth off right now. We could either talk about two things. Uh... The first one being how to deal with the backlog, which has been on our go-to list for such a long time now. Or we could keep talking about depression, because we were having a chat about depression. Um, everyone, your mics are live. Do you want to talk... Those who want to talk about depression and, and just haul and through, put your hand up. I see one hand. Uh, maybe, okay. Let's talk about depression. Um, then we're going to talk about backlog, and then hopefully we're going to talk about... Um, uh, ads on bloody Kickstarter. So, uh, yeah, I was talking to a very dear friend this morning and a piece of advice came up, which was somebody gave me, which was never let depression make um, decisions for you. Um, and it's really hard in this... It's hard now because it's... Is it all the influences that are depressing? I don't know. Or they wear you down? I don't know. Um... My, um, I always say eat healthy and, and, uh, and go for walks. Um, that's my big thing to go to. The other thing I have to go to is you need a manager and that manager may not be in the form of a human being. It could be something like you pretending you're a manager on a Sunday night going, this is what I'm going to do this week. This is excuse me, this is how I'm going to be rolling out all the cool stuff that I'm doing, all the cool content, 
and you're not going to be bogged down by the whole world of distractions, you are going to do your amazingness. Um, if I may, really quickly, um, I find uh, uh, pimping myself online really hard. Um, and the way I get around that is I have a spreadsheet that is telling me what I am pimping every two days, um, specifically for the Kickstarter right now. Um, then that'll move on to Bandcamp. But the um, it's going to be, okay, we're going to, you know, you, you shoot a three-minute long thing, uh, the Kickstarter videos. This is what's great about Kickstarters. You have to do all this stuff. So you've got this three-minute thing, um, and you can cut that into 30-second um, snips, and now you have these six 30-second blurbs. One's talking about music, one's talking about merch, one's talking about the inspiration of the lyrics or whatever. And you've got all of these little things. Plus, for a Kickstarter, you need to have images. So you've got all of this content. Just send it out. Okay, now I'm going to be pushing the red cables that I got. Now I'm going to be pushing the box. Whatever. Now I'm going to be pushing this track. Um, the other thing I have is I have a pimp list. And the pimp list is all social media. And it's everything from um, Spoutable, Sproutable which incidentally I think is crap, to, um, I was actually going to start on Reverb again, but Reverb Nation doesn't, just sucks. Um, Sproutable, but there are still fans on Reverb, so I have to, people are still plugged into that. And man, if you've got a MySpace, maybe you should check out what MySpace is doing. It's still there. Tumblr, don't underestimate Tumblr. When I'm looking at the Kickstarter where people are coming in from, people are coming from Tumblr. Um... Uh, obviously Twitter, Twitch, all that bullshit. Um, and because you're making small videos, put them onto YouTube as shorts. So you have to have an attack plan and you have to do it. You have to make a list of all of your, your, your social media. And a, a, a trick is um, with Twitter, you've got your personal Twitter account and you've got your band's Twitter account. Hit them both. And the thing about it is my personal Twitter account, I will be hitting it at 8 a.m. today. The same thing will go at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. The same thing will go at 12 noon the day after. That's Monday. On Angel Spit, it starts at 11 o'clock a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., day after day. So 11 o'clock today, 1 p.m. tomorrow, 3 p.m. That's just so that there's this constant push out because you can do that with Twitter. Um, and, and people seem to be coming in. I don't know. Wow. Um... I have to have a totally robotic response to um, uh, to to depression, and if I don't, and another thing I do if I'm just so depressed or so in a rut or bored or overwhelmed, I will go onto YouTube and I will watch YouTube videos about gear I already own, and that will kickstart your fire. That will light the fire. Currently, I'm binge watching videos about uh, the Emacs and the Moog Voyager. There's not a lot on the K2000, which is weird. I thought there would be. Um, and that gets me excited about what I am doing. The next thing you do, turn everything off, unplug, go for a walk around the block, come back, make music. Um, man, I'm telling you, walking and physical exercise. Do some sit-ups. Do some planks. You can do some planks in the middle of your damn floor. Set your alarm so that at whatever o'clock every day, you're going to do push-ups, sit-ups, and planks. That's it, to reoxygenize your brain. And if you want to do something crazy as well, buy some plants and stick them in your studio because they're going to help with the oxygen and they're such happy little things. That's Carl Dunn. Does anybody else want to jump in about how to deal with this shit? Go. Um, I'll go. The, uh, just another sort of perspective on um, low mood and difficulties um, with motivation and stuff like that. Um, I don't actually have a good sense of what correlates in the real world outside um, have consistent, repeatable influences on mood. Um, there's, you know, there's there's things that are depressing and things that are, are joyful in the world. And for me, they don't have a, a way of um, you know, influ influencing that. I mean, chronic major depressive disorder has its own cycles and its own uh, comings and goings. And, 
it usually, I don't know if it's irony or poetic injustice, but the same thing that brings that cycle on, whether it's just internal chemistry states or there are external influences, prevent me personally uh, from doing some of the Carl things like taking a walk and buying a plant. And um, it, it, it gets uh, confusing and a little more frustrating. And maybe some other people have had the same experience when um, anybody poses one of their solutions or talks about a, a medication that they were successful with having in consistent influence or an activity when um, those are the very things that you get prevented from doing by the nature of the, 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 the disorder. Um, so you should cheer up. Uh, I know I, I should. Uh, I don't have solutions. I've, I've mentioned before that sometimes when I'm in the, the um, active um, integument and the, the universe feels very uh, thick and slow and senses are dulled and introspection is in focus, I can occasionally pull up the sense of where I am in space. And that sometimes is, is a grounding um, distraction from um, being stuck in, in, in the worst ways. Um, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. I mean, this is a, a, again a bit of talking about just my experience without solutions, since I I, uh, I really I I don't have them. But please, um, if anybody ha has successes and consistent improvements to mood, and they can intervene and recognize their own mood, let's celebrate that because it's fantastic to have that. Thanks, man. That was great. Aaron, hit me. I think when you you get in the pocket of thinking that all the things have to be done all of the time. And I think that gets really overwhelming. That gets very, very depressing. It gets very frustrating uh, because all, all you can think of is, you know, the negative aspect of like, you know, I'm um, being a shit bag. I should have been doing this or I should have had this done a long time ago. There are days where I just block out a section of time. I'm going to jam and listen to music for like an hour and the thing that I'm going to focus on is literally the only thing. And the music, the music's going, the phone is fuck knows where. And all I'm doing is cleaning the bathroom, reorganizing a room. Instead of shit just landing where it landed, I just get to a point where I'm like, everything goes in a box. The box gets thrown across the floor, uh, you know, slide the toad on some carpet, just get it the fuck out of the way. But the point being is I'm listening to the music and I'm reorganizing arranging the space and then eventually you know that that works wonders actually for if you've always had a space that always is the way it is because that's just where shit landed you'd be amazed at what you can find when you want to rearrange it all of a sudden you know to where you'd be like oh fuck yeah of course you know that should have that should have gone there and I could optimize this space and I could put my comfy chair here and I could do all of that but that's stuff that previously you didn't think of because you're inundated with clutter and you didn't just take the time to focus on like just fucking around. I don't know. I don't know if I'm being clear here. The point is, it's like, instead of just having this mental taxing load all the time, there are times that maybe the thing that you should be doing is just listening to music and decluttering your fucking life, you know? And then you could set yourself little reminders and you could write yourself notes and you could stick them on the door. Cause anything that's, tangible and tactful is there and it's not always just jamming on your phone and going into distraction bill that's brilliant man uh thank you man i want to pick up on that in a bit ivan what you got okay i first you know we always have to you know keep in mind depression is probably one of the most complicated and most poorly understood subjects on the planet especially when it comes to the human brain we you don't we only go from one side to the other on extremes on trying to help people with it uh, you know there's definitely the oh you should just be happy get over it like that never works you know then there's you know like the the, the prescriber side where it's just like hey take these magic drugs never mind all the side effects mm. and you'll get over it uh, and it does work for some people and then yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, but like, uh, 
you know, we're we're among a group of people, you know, in an industry like musicians, where you know, like being kind of on the on the spectrum, ADHD wise, is is normal. Um, and one of the things that comes with you know that being left untreated is a propensity towards depression, which is usually because uh, like masking all day and pretending that you don't actually have ADHD is really actually quite taxing and it gets overwhelming and it causes things that shouldn't be overwhelming to become overwhelming. And then with that comes with, you know, that, that, that will drag depression right along with it because the, you know, that's just, that's just how it works ish sort of, we hope, we hope we understand that vaguely, but uh, fixing the underlying, you know, getting the underlying ADHD under control will help make that depression disappear because the thing that's causing it, you're not fixing symptoms now. You're 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 fixing the actual problem, and I'm a, a big proponent of, you know, especially with our humanness, don't chase uh, uh, symptoms, fix the problem. You know, this something I learned because of type one diabetes. Uh, everybody wants to fix the symptoms. It's very rare that somebody comes along and is like, hey, we should fix the problem. Um, the other thing I can say is because you know, we're all you know all over the and you know, we come from all sorts of places is you know imagine you know dragging along with all of that you know having grown up in a world that was going to cause depression because of environmental factors like child abuse um, and so <laughs> the uh, I think I think this becomes more dangerous as we as we age because like things get more settled in and usually bad things are what get settled in. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah, it's so complicated, but you get the, you know, you get the, like the fix the underlyings. Um, you, you don't just think that you're going to get over it because you, it always take, it's going to take help. It, it requires it. Um, and you know, like I can't really can't, you know, like say loud enough, you know, like find a good therapist their job is still just list it's, it's amazing how like breakthroughs in therapy turn into improvements in life like it's, it's gigantic and and i wish that i had been doing that when i wish i could have started on that when i was a teenager my, my early 20s would have sucked way less um like way way less because yeah yeah you know big takeaway lesson also is never and you were saying this earlier never 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 let depression drive or make decisions because as soon as it starts driving and making decisions it's only going to actually work to your disadvantage you know because it's it's this you know well sub process in our brains that really actually doesn't like us you know like it, it, it's a little chunk of our personality that's just like oh you suck um so you know don't let that little sub process actually have control of more important things than itself. Uh, and that is an easy thing to say. It is an extremely hard thing to do. But I think it's, you know, it's one of those moments where once you understand, to really like rock that, you know, the, the it's that it that is not a part of you that's that's working for you, it's working against you. Once you get that, then you know, like knowing is half the battle and you can start you know, making improvements just by stopping, preventing it from making those choices because you know, it'll start making bad choices and then it'll use those bad choices to make more bad choices. You know, the, the snake will start eating its own tail on that one. And it's a, you know, following this weird urge toward self-destruction, which I can, I could go all afternoon on, on how that one works. Uh, but I won't bore you with the, uh, you know, toxic magic. All right. Those are my thoughts at the moment. Thank you. Um, yeah, man, uh, everyone, it, this is really amazing because it's a huge subject and it's also, it's a very personal subject. Like what I could say is going to do somebody else no good whatsoever. Um, so I, um, and it's also difficult with these ones because I'm always trying to like approach it with great respect because I don't know what's going on. Um, but if your brain is, you know, you know, the, I, I guess the good thing about being a 
musician, one of the many good things about being an artist is that your brain thinks uh, creative problem solving is what it's all about. And um, sometimes uh, what's going on can be, a, a, a degree of it can be sorted out by yourself, but I'll, I'll echo a thousand times. Uh, if, if it's bad, get a therapist and, and you might also want to consider medication. Um, I was in a, it's funny for me because like the creative process is everything. Um, it's just everything. And I, I don't know why that is. I think it's because music got me out of the town that I was brought up in and it was not a good place to be. Um, so, uh, for me, art equals survival, um, creating and outputting equates directly to survival. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, when my creative output slows down, um, that to me is, is a big fucking problem. And, you know, like yesterday, I just got out of the house, grabbed a coffee, um, and, uh, and just sat down and wrote stuff. And, and it, that helped. And Aaron, I loved your idea about, um, uh, cleaning the house, uh, which is something I have to do, but, um, you know, putting on music, you know, and, and extra points if it's his rose, extra points if it's not online, getting on your hands and knees and vacuuming. Um, is also bloody great as well. G'day, Rose. Good to see you. Um, so, um, do we want to keep talking about how you make depression better? Um, Ivan, I see your hand. Yeah, other thoughts. Um, the cleaning thing. I mean, like, I used to go through this horrific pattern where, like, shit would hit the fan and I would just wallow in it and, like, everything in my life would just get grungier and grungier and cluttered and cluttered and dirtier and dirtier and horrible and more horrible and then you usually I would I would hit a breaking point where I can't take this anymore and you know I would uh, like do a full deep clean of like just everything everything's back to like like the good place and usually that would that would also snap me out of it uh, you know so like you know, over the years, it became obvious that you could tell where my head was at just by looking how crapped up my environment was, like how how much I'd let it just go to go to go to shit. And you know, it's a it's really, really, it's really, you know, it's one of those one of those things that once I discovered it, it it became a lot easier to short circuit that whole pattern because usually towards the end of that, before the cleaning happened really really bad decisions would get made and you know if we could beat by beating that to the punch i you know could you know short circuit those getting having the opportunity to be made oh um, because you know reasons for sure for sure um bloody good okay uh thank you if anybody else wants to jump in about depression, let me know. Otherwise, I want to talk about getting through the backlog. And it sort of like bleeds quite perfectly into into these two subjects. So um, I want to hear how you guys deal with human people, deal with um, backlog. If you've got a backlog of tracks that you're trying to make into music and it's weighing your brain down, Rosie, how do you do it? I'm just going to make the transition between what I was going to say, but Ivan kind of already said, and the backlog, and that is there's some correlation between inattention and low mood um, to uh, with how many cables run from one end of the studio to the other, but you don't know what they're connected to, and maybe they're not actually connected to anything, and maybe there's four of them going to the same place because you hooked it up five, four or five times over the past six months. And taking that moment... Um, you know, like Aaron was saying, of, of switching to a, a mode where maybe all you're doing that day is listening to music and pulling out short extension cords that are plugged into other power strips that don't end up in the wall socket anywhere. And uh, I usually take a picture of the pile at the end of that and maybe have a sense of 
progression and closure and move on to, you know, working on the thing that I meant to be plugging in yesterday when I started this project and, um, you know, getting on to the task, which often is starting with some material that required digging out of files. And I'm going to think on what some of the solutions are for that backlog, but this sort of leads me to it sometimes. Okay, cool. Thank you, Ivan. All right, let's talk about the backlog. And this is probably very, very, very deeply in, in, in meshed with, you know, the whole ADHD thing. Um, so I've got like three projects, musical projects going on at once. There's band. So there's Illuminatics. Then there's, you know, the, my, my personal industrial thing that I've started, which I'm calling, uh, type one cybernetic organism. The diabetes thing. Um, and then, and then there's my like third one where I do like my super mellow, like David Sylvian stuff. And like the band side, I've got everybody else involved. So like it, it's moving forward at its own pace and I can't really control the pace on that. But then there's the other two where I am just stacking up stuff that is 99% done. Like, like, oh, this will be great once the lyrics are done. Oh, this will be great once the, once the lyrics are done. Oh, this will be great once it's mastered. Oh, this will be, and it just keeps stacking up without like crossing that last tiny and it, it, it's becoming smaller and smaller bit of like this could be done in an hour if i just it, but then it you know it, and after a while it starts to get overwhelming and oh and here's the worst part you know it gets a little overwhelming so what do i do i look through the uh all the stuff that i've got stored up that that hasn't been classified yet and it's like ah oh, this sounds awesome and then suddenly that's still the 95th percent complete state and has been added to one of the other projects <laughs> Okay. Um, I feel your frustration. That's what this face that you're seeing in front of you right now. I want to talk about the, after Resi, I want to talk about the creative project management thing. And I, I'm probably going to use some swear words and punch you. Resi, go. I think step one from transitioning to, from, from backlog, I think, I might be reading this wrong. There's backlog, which might be just stuff undifferentiated and there's backlog which is actual to do tasks like finish this thing add the baseline and i think the the leap between that kind of uh backlog and uh the finish line is putting a vague date on it and moving from to do to calendar that's kind of the way i conceptualize it and that's very general but once things have reached the this is formed i have enough material to move on to calling it an ep or an album and i have an inspiration to um, make it a public thing. There's that. What's the time frame? And undated but finishable things on a list turn into dated, but maybe not quite formed ideas of uh, this is a release date. This is an album. And this is a uh, you know video project. Awesome man. Solved for everyone. There you go. Hey, I'll, let's go to the beach and drink pina coladas or virgin coladas, whatever. While we're going, Aaron, I want you to tell me what's on your mind. It's ironic how that was actually gonna roll straight into. Uh, I was thinking about getting back to the metric to go by that A, you set up the night before and you do whatever candles, lights, et cetera, et cetera, whatever your space is. But also as, as humans we're we're so ridiculously simple sometimes that you need to remind yourself that little things are something to look forward to right beach pina coladas tacos oh fuck yeah it's pizza friday it's taco tuesday it's whatever here if you kind of link the incentive or the reward to enjoy while you're working through your backlog or as an end goal for pushing through the backlog that could be a further incentive or a good thing to look forward to while you're doing that, you know, to where you could be like, all right, it's Thursday, but Thursday's the day where I've got to evaluate everything. I got to fucking run through it, you know, and sometimes 
just that breath of fresh air or having that coffee or whatever beside you, that incentive or even the reward projected out to look forward to might give it a breath of fresh air to be like, oh, fuck yeah, man. I don't even know why this was 94% done, but let's go. Let's kill this shit, you know? Um, and then just remind yourself that, you know, tracks are never finished. They're just merely abandoned in the words of Zug von Rock. <laughs> I probably stole that from somewhere. In fact, knowing me, I did. Uh, because I'm a klepto. Um, my computer's about to crash, and I just want to say to everyone, goodbye, I love you. Uh, but in case it doesn't, I'm putting into uh, chats and everything, hopefully, uh, a Google document. Um, yeah, okay, everything's now not responding. So uh, there's a Google document, and I'm going to... If somebody wants to paste that thing into the Twitch and everything else, that would be great. I want to do that as well. This is the creative process management thing. Um, and it might work for you. It might not work for you. Uh, it works for me, obviously. Um, because I... The first thing about Backlog is I have a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, it says... Aaron's uh, a Grim Opener. And that's right near the top. Actually, Grim Opener. Uh, I haven't forgotten Mr. Grim. Um, secondly, uh, my, uh, my computer's about to crash. Um, tracks that are immediate go there. And I will change the paper on this thing maybe once a week. Once every two weeks. Um... I've tried putting an Excel spreadsheet uh, on um, text documents. It just doesn't work because it just shit gets... They turn into shit fights. I have to do it here. I don't know why paper still works better. I don't know why. And yes, if Google has a blah, 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 I've probably tried the blah, blah, blah. I just like my little thing. And at the top it says, things to do. Um, great. So, um... That's the first thing. The second thing is this um, uh, 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 spreadsheet that, once again, thank you uh, to crew who have pasted that into Twitch because everything has come to a grinding halt here. Um, I use this religiously now that the only way I can finish a track, deal with a track, or know for certainty where something is at is by looking at this thing. Um, and by putting information and little changing the percentage line in there, take it, change it, blah, blah, blah. It will tell you where the tracks are at. You will not like it. Um, it's not very gentle about telling you where the tracks are at. If you want to change it, sure, make your own. Um, but this is for a 12-track album, and it will tell you when the, the, the album is completed. Um, somebody, uh, can someone send me a, uh, that isn't able to copy the link before Zoom crashed? Shit, Zoom crashed? I don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, I'm so sorry, my everything is just dog shit. Um, you brought up a really good point. I think it was, um, Aaron or Ivan, I can't remember, about, yeah, there you go. Everything just died. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. Boom. Um, uh, the, um, about having a break, about having a little celebration. Um, and that celebration might be walking to the corner stop and buying a coffee or a chewy bar or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's a celebration to celebrate that you did something. Um, I don't at all. Every time I go out, it's because I, I'm going to work or I'm going to use this as an excuse to work or try and re-energize my work. I don't... I don't celebrate. Um, and I, that's something I need to change. I have a feeling a lot of us are in the same place due to economics, location, or weather. Um, but celebrations don't have to cost anything. Um, that's all I got. I'm starting to prattle. Okay. Uh, can you guys tell me, um, is the Zoom is still working? Chat's still working? Yeah, fuck, I hate this shit so much. Um, okay. 
does anybody else want to keep talking about this? Because this is such a big, big subject. I have tracks, they're not coming together, what do I do? Razzy, I see a hand, go. Um, I, I don't know what the thing to directly answer that is, actually. That, that's kind of the eternal question. Um, I don't have a trick there, but one of the things people are alluding to is keeping yourself set up for um, success, for making uh, gifts to tomorrow you or tonight you when you're going to need some motivation and things are going to be difficult. And um, I did not mean to do that. Putting stuff in an order that's predictable and comfortable and manageable for yourself is key. Carl, your spreadsheet, um, I've used that to develop my own thing. I go to the databases um, more than spreadsheets just because being able to lay out the information in a way that um, takes away the noise is, is important to me for my process. So I've taken some of the steps and turned them into check check boxes and titles and stuff in a Notion database. And uh, it's keeping me a little on task in the same way a to-do list would, but you don't have to re-enter stuff. You've got these things as objects in the database and now that can also go into calendar entries and it can go into a Kanban board and you can move them around in another project and you can add attributes to that song whether it's um, been handed to remixers and the same stuff you'd put as a, a check mark in a um, in a, a spreadsheet. Um, I, I've been enjoying the messing around bits of the presentation layer of, of, of a database. The other thing that I kind of do is trusting and somewhat fastidiously maintaining the backlog presentation in your computer's operating environment like it's kind of made for that. That is one of the affordances of computer is things are files and folders and hierarchies. Um, and if you can trust it because you keep track of it and you do your backups and they're consistent and persistent and don't change spontaneously on you, then um, having stuff in current projects and past projects and future projects folders or by album strictly um, and, or by genre or something so that you can go easily to that pool of uh, fabric to weave or yarn to weave fabric out of or fabric to make the garments out of or parts of songs to make songs out of more specifically. Um, the consistency of that sort of um, filing cabinet is, is super important to me. Um, and I keep it the same, get a new computer, same hierarchy, get a new computer, add it, you know, copy it over, keep it looking the same. So I always have that to go to. Uh, and between the things that the database does well, which are the relations between them and the consistency of where I go to look for these things that are in progress for, uh, I mean, let's, you, you've said, you know, to make things specific there's a folder called recording there's a thing that gets tagged um album and then there's the title of the album there's a thing that gets tagged remix and there's a title of the remix and there's a thing that gets tagged um client work that gets tagged client work stuff like that so uh yeah i guess uh consistency plus a way of scheduling put those together and uh, i've found it to make things manageable as far as the motivation to actually act on things, that was the question, and I, I just don't know where the magic is in that. Dude, oh, uh, that's a that's a big conversation there. Thank you very much, Rose. Which I want to circle around to, Rose. Hey, hey how's it going? Can y'all hear me? Perfectly. First off, I am so happy to see all of your faces, Carl, Vincent, Ivan, Raz, Aaron, everybody. Mwah! That's the first thing. Second thing. All right, um, this is actually something that I have been straight on like attacking lately. Uh, I've been I've been going through my uh, I don't know. This is probably like the fourth or fifth time that I've been going through the artist way, um, and I know we've talked about that before and stuff like that. And uh, and it's definitely hitting me a little bit different this time around due to all of the other craziness that has happened in my life in the past year or so in everybody's life. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that thing about 
being nice to yourself and like that that is an essential thing because i realized that for me personally and this doesn't necessarily apply to everyone in the world but this applies to me for sure um i i realized that um i think growing up just in general as an artist we are constantly told that art is not a valid form of work you know what i mean we're always like fighting to be like no this is a valid thing you know what i mean and i think that because of that because of that societal pressure to like i got to work i got to work i got to work i got to work, work. Uh, why am i not working what am i what am i doing besides working right now otherwise it's not valid it doesn't count i can't continue to i don't deserve to continue living my life as an artist because i am not working right now how dare i how dare i take a break how dare i have that snack how dare i buy that shirt for myself that i've been looking at how dare i you know what i mean like i feel that that's definitely at least for me just the validity of being an artist in general is something that has constantly been challenged throughout my life and um and i feel internalized you know what i mean and i think that that's part of that workaholic feeling of like if i'm not doing it you know there's no way i'm going to succeed if i don't continue to work continue to work but art is play you know and if you really stick that if you stick too hard to that you kill your little inner artist that's there like hey where's my treat you know like here you are subjecting it to like you know work and all these other pressures and all this you know your day job this and this and that you know what i mean and you're not giving that artist anything you know that little inner artist inside of you you're just fucking telling them fuck off for the entire week and then you get to the weekend and then you're like bitch get to work you know what i mean like it's time it's time to make it's time to get back to work and it's like bitch you've been working all week where why didn't we have any fun you know what i mean and fun doesn't have to be like you said carl doesn't have to be something really expensive so what i've been doing is even just little little moments here and there even if it's just like you know i've been doing like the artist date thing from artist way which seems like such a cop out but that sh it has worked for me anyway so art the concept of the artist date for anybody that doesn't know is basically you take your inner artist out on a little date like once a week just take them to do something you know what i mean it doesn't have to be an expensive thing it doesn't have to be a Cirque du Soleil show it doesn't have to be a broadway show it could be something as simple as taking a 10 minute walk to your favorite store in the neighborhood and buying your favorite snack from when you were like 12 buying some liquor stick and just you know sit on a park bench and eat that shit and just enjoy it and just have fun go get yourself a fucking ice cream you deserve it you deserve it you've been working hard all week you deserve it do a trick get a treat that's what we say in circus you do a trick successfully pull it off you give each other a high five you're like yeah we did that shit you have like a little baby celebration you know and that's that's what we you know it's like that's a how we like hype each other up when we're doing circus stuff and you can do the same thing for yourself and you should because if you're not that's how you end up with this blockage because then you're like, you know, which is not to say that you always have to be in the perfect mood. I used to think that I always had to be in the in just the right mood in order to create art. And that's not true because I've written some of my best songs, some of my most popular songs when I was in a really bad, bad dark place. You know what I mean? So that doesn't really you have to kind of get yourself out of that mode and just got to be like, OK, you know. I'm gonna dedicate some time to this. And once I do that, you know what? I am gonna take a break. I am gonna go outside. I'm gonna go get, you know, I'm gonna go on Grubhub and I'm gonna order my favorite thing for lunch just cause I feel like it. You know what I mean? It's like simple things like that can really make you feel like you are not a piece of crap because that's really like the inner dialogue that goes on in my head. Like all your art is worthless. My friend has, uh, uh, my friend Razor has a song called Everything I Do is Terrible. And, um, and it's about that inner struggle that every artist has where there's just like everything. Why are you even? Li she literally has a line in the song. Uh, why are you even listening to this song? You know what I mean? Like, and, it, and it's like this sarcastic thing where all of her bandmates are like chiming in and stuff. It's really fun and silly, but it's really very true. And it kind of sucks that we do that to ourselves because we would never do that to any of our friends that we care about so why do we do it to ourselves <laughs> um but yeah so i suggest doing very small little thing 
just a nice little small thing. Think about it, you know, like write it down. Be like, hey, what are some of my favorite snacks? You know, you can have like a little, you can make a little hit list in your phone, you know, just do a little memo and just be like, hmm, sit down. Huh, what are some of my favorite little things that don't even cost that much, but that like have always just like, no matter what, when I eat this piece of candy, when I have this cupcake, when I, you know, get this thing, it just feels great. And it's just, it's just a little moment, a little burst of happiness to fucking recharge that inner battery so you can go out and you can fucking rock. Fuck All right, yeah. rent over. That's what Thank I got. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Vince. And good to see you again, Rose. Vince. All right, you're talking about backlog, and I got I got a couple of approaches to that. Depending on where the track is, if it's got, like, it needs a thing, I'm either just going to crank it out right then when I realize that's the thing it needs, or I'm going to possibly try to find somebody else to send it to for that. You've got good friends or a little bit of money and you can pay somebody to do it or have a friend do it, that there's a part of it that you know you can trust them to handle. Even if it's just, you know, I need a baseline on this or the baseline that's on this isn't working. Can you edit it for me, maybe? Just give me... Even if you don't use what they send you in, in, in case of friends, you know, it gives you a little bit of uh, an alternate perspective. So you've got something to work with and maybe that'll get it finished. Also, there's, there's the other option... Which is always, if you've listened to this track several times over several months or weeks or whatever, and it's just not working, toss it. Take the pieces that work and just chuck the rest of it. Take the pieces that work and use them for something else entirely, even. Because sometimes, not all projects are going to work. As, as people that create art and mostly ADHD folks, like... Our moods and motivations are ethereal. You never know what, like, what sounded good to you two weeks ago. You might hate it now. So maybe get rid of the parts you don't like now, keep what you still like, and start it all over. And then you've got a new project rather than something in your backlog. Um, I don't know. I don't, I tend to not keep things that I finish even a lot of the time. Like I, I told you guys before, I just get rid of things. I don't, I don't even care. If it's not something I'm going to work on again anytime soon, why let it take up space in my brain or my hard drive? Like that's just get something else done. Mm. Nah, it's just my two cents. It's maybe a little dark, but effective. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Aaron. I would say uh, just to pile on to everything, I mean, this kind of works in tandem with the whole backlog thing and just decluttering your space. I like to walk around my house with two bins, and it's literally all the shit that's on this table goes in a bin. Bang. It's not sorting. It's not getting into the weeds. It's not getting tangled up, but all the shit goes in the bin. Boom. Goes off to the side. Or if I know that if it's like recycling day, I got bin for, you know, uh, these are cans, these are bottles. But you'll be surprised at how often you start on like decluttering everything and all the shit that you threw in a bin while you're listening to music, you're just fucking jamming, you're sorting through shit. Then all of a sudden you go, I found five uh, cables. I found three power supplies. I found every other thing that could help me, you know, uh, you know, instead of, constantly acquiescing more gear or constantly feeling the need to go out and get stuff you'll find stuff in the decluttering process and in my case i will find extra pieces of tech or gear or things that i film with uh adornments for characters uh, brooches hats gloves the whole nine that previously that went astray in the tornado that went to fucking oz uh somehow has been reclaimed because I didn't get too wrapped around the axle of everything had to have a thing at that moment, but I was able to just chuck it all in a bin and then, like I said, eventually put on some music and just jam and sort. Uh, so I found that to be particularly helpful, and that may help, you know, with the backlog aspect because instead of parked at the computer with your, you know, your brow and your hands for like two and a half hours, you might be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna clean, I'm gonna organize, I'm gonna do everything I need to do. And then that inspiration may find its way to circling back. Or if you've reorganized your studio, then you're a little bit refreshed to where you go, all right, you know, 
I redid some shit or I got a new comfy little seat cushion. I'm going to park it, you know, and foreseeably like the new space or the new head space and then just go. Awesome. Awesome. Man, it's it's all about putting shit back, isn't it? Putting it home. Everything's got to have a home and everything's got to go home. In theater, we call that restoring. So after a show, you have to restore it. Restore everything back to the operating thing. Uh, Ivan. So yeah, uh, no, I mean like uh, I've, I've definitely you know went into went into the music making with a, an entire career of you know systems man management as as my background. So you know my directory structures are pristine, and you know I've gotten very good at you know like like things that don't have a home yet. They live in the scratch directory various Ableton projects um, you know and then once it's into a demo state it will go to the demo you know folder for the the meta project that it belongs to and then when it goes from demo to like actually we're working on this then it, it goes up to the you know final resting place where it is going to get added to you know an actual like project under the meta project um, you know and that 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 all works that works really well you know, because I always know where things belong. Uh, you know, what, what is generally killing me, though, especially on, a, on my side stuff, is when I get to anything involving vocals, everything just freezes inside me. It, it goes full on diamond. You know, it's just... I, don't make me do that. Okay, that's good. Um, I want to talk about that some more in a bit. But first, vocals, man. Here's Rose. Da, 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 da. Uh, first off, I just want to say, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to dip out a little bit early today because I got a show today at Coney Island. So I have to finish packing all my gear and stuff. Uh, but uh, I I just had to see you guys. I've been missing you. I've been craving your company. And it's been a really good conversation. Uh, I agree with everything that everybody's been saying. Cleaning up when, when it, yeah, if shit is just like really not working, cleaning up is so helpful. Um, especially also, look around your setup. Go to start to set up. And if there's anything where you are, uh, like for perhaps you have to switch cables to like, you know what I mean, to set up from stuff, um, try to just get rid of all of those blocks and make it so that you can just instantly jump in. You know, like if you if you have two devices that are sharing the same cable and you have to go through that extra step, that's that extra moment that your brain will use to trick you into not working. That's that extra moment that your brain is just going to be like, hey, you know what? Let's distract you with all of this other stuff. Oh, it's going to be too hard now. Look, you have to do all of this extra work now. It's like trying to make it, you know, set yourself up for success and, you know, uh, Ivan had some great tips as far as making sure that your directories are in such a way that like, you know, okay, here's the, here's the projects that are working on. You can always set it to like, okay, you know, uh, I like to sometimes put as I'm getting closer to the end of working on things, I, I, within that project, I'll be like, okay, just needs vocals, just needs this. You know what I mean? And then I, when I'm looking for something, you know, when something is getting too obnoxious and it doesn't want to work on it i'll just go to one of those folders and i'll be like hey here's something i could knock out real quick i think you know if i'm having like you were saying ivan uh, an issue with vocals on something then i'm like all right well today those vocals are not fucking coming out well but you know what i could really quick put those those that last couple of drum fills on track x you know like let me let me look in here and see What's something that I can do, a concrete thing that I can do to push this next thing that's easy. Whatever the easiest one is, just do it. You know what I mean? Have that have that for yourself ready to go so that that way you can just fucking jump in there. And also, in when it comes to sharing uh, stuff with a friend, that's super helpful. Just make sure that it is a believing mirror. It's somebody that you can trust to show that little, sometimes we make the mistake of we're so excited working on something, you know what I mean? That we want to show that precious little brain baby to someone, you know what I mean? And sometimes we show it to the wrong person and they derail our whole shit. They just fuck our whole shit up. 
You know what I mean? And it's like, if you really think about it, in retrospect, you'd be like, oh, that's actually, that's not a person that I can trust with this little, this little newborn baby. You know, you have your friends that are like, all right, that's an experienced mom with three kids. I can let that person hold my baby. Don't, hold, don't hand your baby to somebody who's never held a baby before and is like dangling it by one foot out the window. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that to yourself. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't do it. So just have a little list, you know, to like to you know two or three people. You know what I mean? That you just know that if you share that track with them, that they're going to be able to give you constructive criticism, and they're not just going to take your still beating heart out of your chest and fucking throw it on the ground. Don't let them throw your brain baby out the window. <laughs> uh, and that's just what I wanted to add to what people were saying before. I, I think that's a super helpful thing. Just make sure you have vetted that person mentally, and you're like. You're not just showing it to the first person just because you're excited. You know what I mean? Because certain people, you can only show them the finished thing. You can't show them the little. They they're not capable of. You know, maybe they're not a musician, so they don't. They they're not capable of seeing the potential of the track. What it's gonna sound like when it's finished. You know what I mean? Like in your head, you have like the full orchestration, but that person is just like, uh, but there's no X, Y, Z. You know, like how am I supposed to judge it? It's like I just want you know pointers on x you know what i mean so just make sure it's the right person that can actually give you useful information that is helpful and not hurtful information that will throw your baby out the window all right that's it <laughs> thank you rose thank you very much razzy backlog ivan you've at least introduced where the brick wall is that you're hitting and you gotta this is what you gotta do you the vocals actually coming up against them making a demotivating kind of vibe you gotta get them down there early put the bad stuff on there do it more get used to that being just another part of the workflow and when you have your scratches on the tracks you don't need to leave them unmuted all the time you can have them in there and quiet but when you turn them on you're gonna know i just need to punch this word i have a better idea there and it's a 13 second process rather than the end of the road and it's done early in the demoing and it's done early in the songwriting and it's done continually and iteratively in the finishing i'm talking about my own solutions of course but if i can offer them as a way of reducing that friction and lowering the anxious barrier of now i've got to perform no you've got to iterate you've got to create you've got to do what you do and I think there's a lot of ways to approach everything you put into the track as the pleasurable part of it. Some of the file management might be hard for some people. Some of the finishing an in-tune emotive vocal might be the hard part. But if you do those things incrementally and stay up with them like you do so well with the file management, it can help. Carl, I know you have thoughts about vocals also, in particular. Yes. Uh, are you passing me the ball? Thank you, sir. I apologize for the sheriff's helicopter that just thundered over my head. Great sound. Fantastic bass response. Um, so, uh, my thoughts on vocals were kind of maybe getting off the subject. Vocals! So... I don't think vocals should be the last thing that happens. So many industrial bands go, vocals are the last thing that goes down, and then they wonder why their song sucks. Oops, did I just say that? Um, uh, vocals, I really think, need to happen very, very, very early in the piece. Sometimes even first. Every time I do that, um, this is me personally talking, the song is strong. If I do not, I've got this great track and I can't think of a good chorus to save myself. Whereas if um, the song is built on a strong vocal chorus, the song is going to rock every fucking time. Um, the th tricky thing for me about vocals is, so that means I have to disappear write lyrics super early. But, you know, as I've said before, it's... Um, the lyrics, the words, the, the, the montage that the words are painting, um, 
is being fed by the samples and the baselines that are being used and everything else. Everything is feeding itself each other. Um, it is a pain in the ass if you need to change the um, melody. Hi, welcome to jump in if you want. Um, it is a pain in the ass if you uh, go about changing the tempo. But um, hold on, I'm finding a URL for the melodizer if she's interested in jumping in. Um, the uh, and anybody else who wants to jump in. Um, but yeah, you got to do vocals early. Um, the, the bugger of thing about vocals is if you do a demo, you're going to remember the demo, and as you listen to it, your brain's going to go, that's how the vocals go. So shaking out of demo mode, going into, okay, now we are delivering this like a motherfucker mode can be hard. I found that I have to do three sets of vocals. One is the demo where I'm actually singing like this, <gasps> making sure that the timing is right, the really rough melody is right, and I can breathe. Then the second vocal is when the lyrics are mostly there. I've got the tempo mostly there. Um, and that's where I'm delivering it with power, that this is what the song is going to sound like. And then the last one is the final vocal. And man, I gotta tell you, I hate doing final vocals. Um, I'm trying to get into the habit of that version two uh, of vocals where I'm going live at it. I record it with the good mic because I've just got like this crappy 58 and I use that. But if I record it with the good road mic in case it gets used, because there's been quite a few times where the demo vocal is the final vocal. I recorded it on the road and it's like I'm using it because it works. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and, and spend time on the lyrics. Spend time on the lyrics. Spend time on the vocals, because they're so, so important. You know, it's the most, we're all into synthesizers, and the vocal is the most beautiful synthesizer you own. It's the most in-depth modeling thing that there is. Um, I could keep going off on this, but just don't, don't do a frontline assembly and leave it to the last minute. Don't do it. Um, because, and Skinny Puppy, those guys get away with it. They are some of the very few who get away with it. Fucking take pride in your voice. And the weirder your voice is, the better it is. The more you go, eh, my voice is weird. And another thing is try and get contour in your voice. Melodic contour. Even if you can't sing... It doesn't matter. Try and do scales. Like, I was working on a track with someone this week, and it's like, just try. Try melodic content. And if you're not in pitch, it doesn't matter. Ozzy Osbourne wasn't in pitch for a while. And a thousand other bands we could mention. That's all i got. Thank you very much for joining me. Here's Raz. Is your hand still... Did you ever see the, like, cable access version of Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne playing? I don't remember which... Yeah, I think Rudy Sarso was in the band too, and he hits a couple of clams. It looks really like three tube camera ac cable access kind of look, and he hits a couple of clams and makes the face like he just wasn't reaching the notes. And he he really by the album time when he's double tracking himself, he's getting these pitches that are just they soar. But at you know at, in the moment doing it live without the benefit of uh, overdubs and punches, clam face looks at Randy. It's just so human keep going man um the thing i i think about when you're talking about vocals there's there's three um that came to mind one if you're desmond childs and you're doing a writer's room session and you're thinking of titles and we're just coming up with titles and these are the titles and then you make songs based on those titles and you end up with like absolute number one hits that's one thing because you just wrote something so universally distilled and appealing that there's you know no contention um that's one thing but i don't think that's what we're doing and there are another million ways um to something that's artistically expressive and, and fulfills what you were intending to do and probably connects with the smaller subset of people that we're actually talking about and i don't also think you even really need the lyric to start and maybe not even to finish we're in a genre where um you know, Dead Can Dance and the Cocteau Twins sort of are at the, the, the beginning of what we're hearing 
And although, you know, at least Liz Fraser claims to always have had lyrics, it's not necessarily that she wrote them and then sang them. It sometimes definitely sounds like she sang them and wrote them. And Peter Gabriel does the same thing. So I think there's a backwards approach to that that you can easily get into and it may be freeing. Um, and then lastly, you don't necessarily have to get infatuated with the demo if you leave the bad stuff in there and really just make it an unusable part that shows the contour that, that Carl was talking about and shows the emphasis on um, the emotive uh, arc and, and phrasings and stuff that you're intending leave it at that don't don't try to finesse it from the start and then it'll help prevent um, falling in love with it and also for me anyway it gives me the motivation when I hear it to fix the things and take it to the next step. And okay, this truly lastly, there is no final vocal. There's just running out of time. So don't worry. You can always, you know, keep working on that. So. Yeah. Those things. Um, I, um, I guess it's part of my whole creative process management is I've got to do that final vocal. And, um, because I, I do like to procrastinate and I, um, with everything I do, it's about process. And for me, part of my process is I've got my little sugary Ricola, Ricola. Don't use the uh, sugar-free ones because they dry your throat out. And then you got to wash your teeth a hundred times after the sugar ones anyway. Then, um, you know, water, whatever it is you're doing, fucking coffee and just yeah, you got to figure, you got to, for me, at least, I've got to do it. And um, those lyrics are quintessential to my existence. Like, they've got to be, um, every song has got to, ha has got to, it's got to have lines in it that it's like, yeah, I will tattoo that to my fucking leg. Like, it's got to have that epiphany in it. Um so I spend so much fucking time on lyrics, but that's just me. Other people, ashes falling from the sky, you know. If, if I could just jump in, I fully agree with that. And I like the way you elaborated on it. I think that there are different ways to get there. Yeah. And my, my kind of angle is if there's some gibberish that brings you to those tattooable slogan lines, I, I know it because I get the hairs on my neck stand up and I say, oh, I did a thing. There it is. And it's maybe, you know, once in a song, five times in a song, if you're super lucky. But I, I'm with you there, 100%. Yeah. Um, and, and be open to, you know, mistakes. I'm so glad you brought up Peter Gabriel. You know, the whole Gabrielese language that he sings in and his songwriting process is just magical. I saw this thing about... Uh, uh, George Clinton and Atomic Dog, um, which is one of my favorite tracks. Man, I, I heard that track when I was like eight or something, the first time I heard that out, I, and it was like, what is this? And I think that's, you know, that, that song is so dark and so fucking amazing. But he was just talking about how him and P-Funk accidentally came up with, like, totally accidentally made this monumental track happen. God damn. Aaron. Hey, so uh, I think we've dabbled about this in the past, but also uh, in regards to, I mean, being well supplied, having water, having everything around you. For fuck's sake, man, like stretch. Like stretch, do things with your body, fucking... We had a blast uh, recorded shit for ha Hardcore Pong because Zook was like, what are you doing? Why are you just standing there three fucking hands in the air? And I had so much fun doing it, but it got a better and better take because we needed stuff that, you know, that had a lot of energy and it wasn't just deliver to the microphone, deliver to the microphone. Like, I think about it like, just like if you... If you haven't been in a theater class or if you even just want to go observe them, if you don't feel like you could just jump out and do it, there's plenty of theater classes where people, when they warm up, stretching is not a fucking option. They're like, you're going to stretch. You're going to walk. You're going to put your elbow behind your head. You're going to stretch your muscles, you know, while you're walking. And then they'll give you lines to give to people. And every new person that you meet, 
or if you meet them, you treat them as if they're a new person and you do five, six, seven, eight laps. But the point is the line might be like, what time is it? Then you do a lap and you come around. What time is it? Then you come around again. It's different inflection. It's different takes. You can do that while you're in your recording space. Just hit record and just fucking, okay, now's the time I stretch out. Now's the time I throw my hands around. I go fucking crazy. I take a lap and I hit the mic with different approaches to where what time is it becomes eight different inflections. And then later you could go, you know what? I like number six. Number six was awesome. Number six was like, packed with aggression you know or you might have threw a few fucks in there but point being is like you get energy in your body when you're doing things different ways and you'll get different takes if you don't just roll out of bed and rub sleep out of your eyes and go all right i guess we're recording vocals you know if you approach it flat it's going to be flat it's going to be fucked but if you actually stretch and get some circulation going and then you know take a deep breath and then hit it you'll you'll get more fun results out of it um that was awesome and i thank you uh i want to throw this to vince the 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 amazing vince okay i'm talking about vocals and i don't do a lot i've done one track that i actually used my vocals on but uh i think in most cases your your inflection and the emotion behind it is far more important than the notes if you can edit it to make it fit in the mix, regardless of whether it's necessarily on, it's good. And also, never be afraid to add little, a few fucks in there, regardless what the line is. Because fuck is a powerful word. I mean, this, this is a little bit sarcastic, but not really entirely. It's, it's mostly, like, genuinely how I feel about it. If, if there's a curse word at all that you can throw into the line to give it more to make it hit harder, make it make it mean something a little more. Even I fully believe that profanity is there for a reason. Like it's not bad words; it's words that are meant to emphasize things and get a point across harder. Because sometimes that's what you have to do. So no matter even if you didn't write that that into the line, or somebody else didn't write it into the line, throw it in there anyway. Because worst case scenario, if that ends up being the best take you've got, except for that fuck in there they can always edit that yeah or you can edit it yourself whatever the case may be um i totally agree uh i'm all about them them fucks um i think that um yeah trying to get your your vibe into a place where it's like really vocals have got to be done aggressively that's what i think well i mean like you know if the song's aggressive it's got to be bloody aggressive and Vince, I was gonna email you during the week, man. I was listening to your, um, I was listening to your uh, one of the tracks that's actually on the Industrial Incisions playlist, and it was fucking great. Really, really enjoyed it. Really dark, really dark stuff. So I thank you for that. It was one of your tracks. Which one? I don't remember. It's on the playlist. It's on the, the Industrial. One of the old ones or one of the new ones? Uh, well, whatever is on the playlist. This is so very aw- awkward because I don't know what the song is. But I do know it's on the Industrial Incisions playlist. Hey, why don't you go listen to the Industrial Incisions playlist and decide which track you like? Um, I actually really liked it. And now it's popping up in my daily feeds because I liked it. Um, it's, I'm thinking it's probably Certain Misfortune. Okay. Cool. With passion for hypnosis, because I that's that's one of them I put in there for sure. Yes, it may have been that one. It was very dark though, and I loved it. Um, I now don't know what we're talking about. Does anybody want to jump in and, and steer the course to the magic place of magicdom? Bueller. Should we talk about marketing? Oh fuck! Let's talk about marketing. Do you want me to say, who wants I'm to sorry. start talking about marketing? I can. Do you want to talk about marketing? Oh, Vince wants to talk. Vince, I'm listening. You got you to put your hand up. I, sorry, Rezzy, you're next. Go, Vince. To, I couldn't get to the button. <laughs> um, I do not have a ton of, like, verifiable knowledge on marketing. I've done a lot of trial and error things for myself. I've not done a ton of 
following anyone's instructions necessarily in marketing other than to post often and sometimes I fail at that even but I found that at least recently the most effective thing you can do to market for yourself because Facebook and that don't Facebook Instagram whichever one you've got more reach on do it there or both if you've got about the same don't necessarily pay attention to your number of followers pay attention to the number of engagements you get on posts because I've got way more followers on Instagram than I do or on Facebook than I do on Instagram but I get almost no engagement there so Instagram's where I run the ads through but look up your top 20 most popular hashtags for the thing you're doing and then also include a couple things that are local to you in there look up local things that apply to what you're doing apply those also use those hashtags when you apply your, your advertisement to select the interests for your advertising pool because Instagram lets you do that you pick people interested in these things it gives you a really kind of a lot of places to choose from so you can you can go broad but still fit within your audience or at least within your audience and the outskirts of your audience that you might be able to bring in. So it, it works for a lot of things. Uh, my turnover rate has been about five cents a click and that's like a, apparently pretty good. I don't know. I, I, uh, I How much money did you put into an ad? How much did you spend I on the ad? I never put... The most recent ad was $10. Maybe 20 and that that was that was Instagram where you yielded five cents a click. Yeah. Over a three day or five day ad, I think it was. I think. Or two dollars a day because it was ten dollars total. I need to run another one of those actually pretty soon because I'm trying to do stuff everywhere. Nobody knows about it. I'm listening to you. Keep going. I'm just, I'm checking some numbers here, by the way. Um, Did you want to add any, um, let's go ahead. Also pay attention, pay attention to where your, your audience is. Anytime you get likes or comments on posts, go check out that person's profile and see if it gives you a location. Because that's the other thing you want to do is advertise through the system, through the, through the ad, through the ads thing that like, let's pick locations choose locations where you know there's at least a couple other people that have been interested in your stuff because culturally speaking if that's where they live and they're interested in your stuff there's a good chance that someone else in that area is probably going to like it there's something about the sound or what you're having to say the people in that part of the world are picking up on so location 